Hey YouTube, Glenn here from Top the Cards and Games, and we have a couple box openings of the new Yu-Gi-Oh! set Secrets of Eternity. Uh, we got two boxes to open for you guys today, so uh, let's get started. Uh, in this set we get more Clyforts, more Burning Abyss, and uh, the introduction to the Infernal Dark type, which is pretty awesome. Oh, and the Necros as well. Uh, Neckers are going to be one of the top tier car, uh, decks of the format once we get the next little bonus set that has more of them in it. But uh, it's a good start here with Gungnir and Necros Cycle. Uh, there's the Frontline Observer. Lightning Rod Lord. Neither player can activate spell cards during main phase one. It's a four star light 1800 attack monster. Thunder. Um, that's not bad by any means. It's not great. It doesn't really accomplish anything currently, but I could definitely see it uh, having some gameplay effects in the future. Uh, Raid Raptor Nest. Uh, which one is this? Cagna, Melbranch of the Burning Abyss. Uh, this is the one that if it is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Burning Abyss spell or trap card from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, it combos nicely with the new uh, Burning Abyss ritual spell card, and then obviously you can send Burning Lake to get back with Dante. Uh, Performer Pile, Trump Witch, and the new Stellar Knight, uh, Regal. Uh, Regal's actually really good. It lets you, it gives you a summonable out to Winda. Uh, just one summon, and you're over 22, the 2200 threshold, so that's not bad by any means. Koaki Mirror Overload. Uh, more Rock Stun type support. It's not bad. I can't attack like the rest of the uh, Rock ones. Dragoons of Draconia, which is the Sneak Peek card. It's uh, actually not bad at all. If, uh, I, I mean, that's our type's gonna get more support, so I could definitely see some play in the future. For now, though, it's not that great. Uh, UA turnover tactics. Uh, I think the UAs are actually really close to being one, a, a really strong competitive deck. Uh, it's gonna take some time, but they'll get there. We got Libic, Melbranch of the Burning Abyss, and if, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 3 dark fiend type monster from your hand, but its effects are negated. So it's another special summon effect, Burning Abyss monster. Um, it seems pretty good to me, I don't, I don't know. I could definitely see it seeing play. I don't see it not seeing play. And obviously the Burning Abyss rares have the same special summoning clause and destruction clause. Uh, the Infernoid Patrulia. And Malcoda, Netherlord of the Burning Abyss, ghost rare. So that's pretty neat. You're right, I should probably put these cards right here where you can see them. Next pack, we got a Dragon Dowser, which doesn't really do much. <clears throat> Another Koakimiro Overload. Uh, the Dance Princess of the Necros. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of a Necro's Ritual spell card. Necro's Ritual monster you control cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effects. This card is tributed by a card effect. You can target one of your banished Necro's monsters except Dance Princess of the Necro's and add it to your hand. You can use this effect of Dance Princess and Necro's once per turn. So it's a really good recycling card for the Necro's archetype. Another Infernoid. Dance Princess and the Good and Evil of the in the Burning Abyss. Uh, this card is used to ritual summon the Malkota, Nether Lord of the Burning Abyss. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal six or more. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and send one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard. Add one Burning Abyss card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Good and Evil of the Burning Abyss once per turn. So this card essentially you get to add any Burning Abyss card. Including Firelight. Uh, 
Uh, we got a Swordsman of Revealing Light and a Necro's Cycle. Swordsman of Revealing Light is actually really, really cool. It's a shame we got him as late as we did. I don't see it seeing much play currently. Uh, UA Blockbacker. Uh, Void Expansion, which is the field spell for the Infernoids. A UA Playmaker and a Void Seer, which is the quick play spell for Void uh, Infernoids. Let's target one Infernoid Monster you control. That target is unaffected by the opponent's card's effects this turn. If your Infernoid Monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead of destroying one of those monsters. That's not bad at all. Uh, super Heavy Samurai Trumpeteer and Farfa, Melbrancher of the Burning Abyss. And it's, if this card is sent to the grave, you can target one monster on the field and banish it until the end phase. So that's actually really good uh, to let uh, Burning Abyss play around certain cards like Wenda or any problematic card. Uh, Gem Knight, Lady Lapis, and a Pot of Riches. So this is a pretty good box so far. There's uh, only two more packs left. Another UA Blockbacker and an Apocalyphorid Skybase. Um, cannot be special summoned, requires three Clyde tributes to the normal summon set. If this card is normal summoned or set, it is unaffected by spell trap cards and, and by activated effects from any monster whose level rank is lower than this card's current level. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. And it has 2900 attack, 2500 defense. And it is a 9 star, I believe. So. It's uh, not bad. And then the last box we got an ultimate rare Super Heavy Samurai Warlord Susanoa. So that's not that's not a bad box by any means. Uh, so the first box. This was a really good first box. We got a an ulti ghost and a secret rare. In addition to the other cards. Uh, moving on though, we're just going to go straight into the next box. Alright, let's get let's get right into it. Uh, Raid Raptor Nest. Dragon Hauser. Another Infernoid. Dance Princess and another Satellar Knight Regal. A Necro Cycle, and we got a Nef Shadal Fusion, which is the new uh, Shadal Fusion card. And it's activate this card by declaring one attribute, equip only to a Shadal monster, and it becomes that attribute. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one Shadal Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or your side of the field as fusion materials, including the equipped monster. You can only use the effect of Nef Shadal Fusion once per turn. Um, overall, I think the card's not that amazing. I can see it seeing a lot of play in any. Um, Hidden Armory builds. Uh, in traditional Shadal decks, I think you're only going to be playing one of this card. But it's it's still pretty good. It's still a Shadal Fusion card, so it'll see play. It's unfortunate how watered down that card is, making it only so you have to equip to uh, only Shadal monsters and stuff, but I guess it's fair. Uh, Clayfort. Cycle. I guess I should talk about this guy. So, uh, obviously his pendulum effect is you cannot special summon monsters except climb monsters, which is like the rest of them. 
Uh, this effect cannot be negated. All climb monsters you control gain 300 attack. Uh, pendulum scale 1. Um, you can normal summon this card without tributing it. Without tributing, if this card is normal summoned without tributing or is special summoned, its level becomes 4 and its original attack becomes 1800, like the rest of them. If this card is normal summoned or set, it is unaffected by activated effects from any monster whose original level rank is lower than this card's current level, like the rest of them. When this card is tribute summoned by tributing a clan monster, you can target one card on the field, return it to the hand. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the effects activation. So, uh, spell speed 4? Pretty good. I'm not sure why they banned Super Poly and then released cards like this. I feel like it's kind of contradictory, but it's a really good card. Another Dance Princess. A Kawaki Mira Overload. A Frontline Observer. Uh, got him second call and an infernoid intra. This is the spell trap one, I believe. You can target one face up card, your opponent controls, return it to the hand. Okay, the spell trap one is the common one then. Or the rare, one of those two. Uh, lightning Lord, or Lightning Rod Lord. Uh, Farfa. And the Gen Gem Knight Lady Lapis, which is a really good card too, if you're interested in Gem Knights. I don't know how playable they are, but they're a fun deck, and that's a really strong card for them. Uh, Backblocker, the Blockbacker, and a Thunderclap Skywolf. If this card is special from the graveyard, you can destroy all face of monsters your opponent controls. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. He's a 7 star, 2500 attack, 2000 defense. He looks kind of cool. Uh, Infernoid Harm Harmonic and Infernoid Patrulela. Uh, this, the Harmonic, is the once per turn you can target one monster in the field, destroy it. This card cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. And then once per turn, you, during your opponent's turn, you can tribute one monster, then target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. So, um, I don't think he's that great. Level 3 is kind of a conflicting level in that deck. Um, obviously, currently you have to play like three of them, just because there's not all the Infernoid monsters out yet. But overall, I, I don't think he's that great. Uh, Kagna, Melbourne for the Bring of Jump, uh, Trump Witch and Jinzo Ejector. So, this card's name becomes Jinzo while in the field or in the graveyard. Uh, you contribute this card, add one Jinzo monster from your deck to your hand, except Jinzo Ejector. And then after that, you reveal all set cards in your opponent's spell and trap zones. And if there are trap cards among them, you can special summon Jinzo monsters uh, from your hand up to the number of trap cards revealed. You can only use the effect of Jinzo Ejector once per turn. Uh, so, currently, this card isn't that great. Uh, however, this card has insane OTK potential, uh, depending on the right format. Just being able to drop hypothetical three Jinzos out of your hand and not have your opponent be able to activate traps is just insane. Uh, another Quacky Mirror Overload. And then since it's a machine and stuff, you can just do stupid OTKs with uh, Machine of Fortress and stuff like that. So I think this card has a ton of potential in the future. Currently, it's not that great. Uh, Dragoons of Draconia. Down to our last two packs. Uh, UA turnover tactics. And then Livic. So, overall, these were some really solid boxes. Uh, we'll go over all we got. Uh, 
So overall we had some really, really solid pulls and uh, the set is currently out so come on down and pick them up. Uh, thanks for watching YouTube. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe and uh, until next time.